Hey guys, in today's video I am going to show you step by step how to set and lay the table for an afternoon tea party. So if there's ever been any doubt in your mind as to where the cutlery goes, where the napkin goes, where does the plate go, you're in the right place and this is totally the video for you. I'm going to strip it down, show you step by step and give you close ups. So keep watching if you want to create exactly this. Also, just to make things really simple, if you don't have time to watch this entire video, I will put a link below to a gallery of images of the table setting. Here is a close up of the crockery that you are going to need. You're going to need some underplates, some saucers, some teacups, tea strainers. These are optional. You don't need them, but they're just a bonus and they look great. You're going to need teapots, large or small, a milk jug, a sugar bowl, have the jam and cream dish, and you're going to need a cake stand of some sort, napkins. Now, I personally prefer cloth napkins. I just think they add a touch of class and refinement. This is totally optional and up to you. First things first, teacup underplate saucer. Underplate, this is a slightly larger than a saucer. It's what you're going to have the sandwiches and the scones from. So the sauce always goes on top of the underplate and you want to grab your teacup, put that on the saucer, and then you have something that we like to call a trio. You always want the teacup handle facing east, always. So it's this way, in this direction. You want to grab your teaspoon and place it directly underneath the handle. That forms your trio and you can leave it just like that and that is one option. So you're going to have it in your place setting as the trio. You then want to grab your cloth napkin and place it directly beside the teacup. Here is a close up. Option number two, which is my personal favorite, is to grab the trio and you want to just Split the teacup, saucer, and teaspoon and place it slightly to the right and above your underplate. Don't worry, I'm going to do a close up. You then want to place the napkin on top of the underplate, and now we're going to cover cutlery. So we have a pastry fork, a tea knife. Just to give you an idea of dimensions, this is a normal knife. This is a tea knife, very big difference in size. Tea party cutlery is always dainty. No matter what you're doing, a dinner party or an afternoon tea party, the fork, or in this case, the pastry fork, goes to the left. The knife goes to the right. Most importantly, the blade, or where the incisions are, in this case, the tea knife doesn't have any incisions, but you normally want it facing west. So you always want the blade facing west and that goes on the right hand side of your fork. I'm going to do a close up now. I personally love this second option. I just think it looks really, really cute and elegant. Of course, one of the main things that I feel up levels any tea party is having cloth napkins as opposed to paper disposable ones. And they're so inexpensive to buy. They're more environmentally friendly, so that's a little top tip. The next thing is a tea strainer. So just so you know, this is a tea strainer. This is called a tea strainer. This is called the drip bowl. And what this is used for is to catch the tea leaves that the teapot cannot catch. With a tea strainer, you always want this to go directly above the teacup. Just so you know with a tea strainer, you want to grab the strainer, put it on top of the teacup, and you go ahead and pour your tea. It just catches all those extra tea leaves. If you'd like to know more about the entire etiquette of afternoon tea, you can watch this video right above here, and I will also leave a link to it in the description box below. With the teapot, you want the spout facing west. And there are no hard and fast rules with this. Put the teapot wherever it feels like going on the table. If you have individual ones, you just want to place it above the underplate. If you have a large one that's going to be shared among loads of people, just pop it in the middle of the table. So you just want the teapot very easy to access and somewhat symmetrical to where the tea strain is so it makes sense on the table. The magical touches. So we have a jam and cream dish. This is what you're going to put the clotted cream or the vegan cream and your jam in. This particular one, I mean, it's so gorgeous. This is from At Home in the Country. I will link to them below. However, if you don't want to invest in a jam and cream dish, because let's just say this is a one-off or a special surprise, don't fret, just use a teacup. Use a teacup, it's so beautiful. Just pop your, pop your jam in there, pop your cream in there with a teaspoon and done. Sugar bowl and the milk jug. 
This just goes in the middle of the table. So you want it dotted around the middle. If you have a large banqueting table and you have loads of people, you need a few of these between every four to six people. There's no rules with this, just pop it where it's easy to access as long as it's in the center of the table. One of the last things is of course your cake stands. You have a few options. So you have these type of cake stands. I actually made these. If you would like me to do a video tutorial of exactly how to make the step-by-step, -step, please comment below. I'm more than happy to share my top tips with you. I used to invest so much money in cake stands because I used to be pretty obsessed with them. But in the end, I started making my own just because they're one-offs. They're so original and they are so whimsical. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. This is just a teacup and I like to pile strawberries high. At the end of this video, I will put a few shots of how I use my cake stands and how pretty they can make a table. I love height because I think that different heights really add a touch of mystery and elegance to the table. If you don't want to invest in cake stands, you can just use a simple serving plate. You can buy these at charity shops or thrift stores in the US. They're really easy, they're really cheap, and they are, and they'll get the job done. So you can pop your cake on there, your finger sandwiches. If you'd like to learn how to make finger sandwiches, I have another video just above here, and I will link it below too. And it will look just as beautiful on your table. So that is it when it comes to cake stands and plates. So that, my friends, is how you set a tea table. A few little tips that I'd like to add to this, to add some opulence and luxury, and it's so inexpensive, is fabric. Now this is crushed velvet. Um, you can buy it by the meter in most craft shops. I personally bought this from Hobbycraft. I love anything with a rich, deep tone, particularly ombre, rust, deep purples. They just make any table pop, and it works really well with gold. So I use this as a simple table runner. I will show you how it all came together in some photos at the end. Just so you know, adding some fabric to a table really takes it to the next level. You can use lace, you can use whatever your heart desires. If you would like some more tips on how to bring a table to life, please comment below so I can do some more videos for you. What I also like to do is I like to add some fresh roses and I put people's names on them as an alternative place setting, which I think is really gorgeous. You can do chocolate dipped strawberries, which are perfect for vegans as well with some nice vegan chocolate. I just really feel that a table is a place to connect with other people. It's a place where magic happens. So if it's in your heart to entertain, if you're kind of in a bit of a, in a, bit of a slump and you want to reactivate your social life or you want to get out there and express yourself, the table is like a canvas. It is so creative and I encourage any of you to do the same. All right, so thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon. Take care, bye.